There's a huge variety of aircraft designs that could be used to make a flying car. When most people think of flying cars, they often think of literally a car with wings and propellers. In reality, flying cars will not look like this, but it's an interesting starting point. Real flying cars will have wings or propellers or both. Basically, they could be like normal airplanes, what we call fixed wing aircraft, or they might look more like a helicopter, which is often referred to as a rotary wing aircraft. Did you know that the rotating blades are actually acting as wings to keep the aircraft in the air? Fixed wing aircraft do have a huge advantage in terms of efficiency, allowing them to go much faster and fly much further than rotary wing aircraft. But helicopters have a much bigger advantage for flying cars in that they can take off and land vertically, or what we call VTOL capability. Remember that fixed wing aircraft require a runway. Being able to take off and land vertically is a huge advantage when operating in complex urban environments, which is exactly where flying cars will be operating. Helicopters are not the only vehicles that are capable of VTOL, mind you. There are aircraft that can rotate their propellers, like the V-22 Osprey used by the US Marines. There are aircraft that can vector the engine thrust downwards, like the Harrier jump jet. There are aircraft that have two propulsion systems, like the F-35B with its lift fan. Or aircraft that are actually designed to sit on their tail at takeoff and then pitch over into forward flight once they're in the air. These aircraft have different trade-offs in terms of stability and control. And as the Wright brothers discovered, this trade-off really matters. For flying cars, the jury is still out on what the best vehicle design type or morphology is going to be. In this program, we're going to begin with a multi-rotor vehicle, but in term two of the program, we'll study fixed-wing aircraft as well.